new nations hoped to protect their fragile freedom through the international body that met for the first time in 1920. The League of Nations held its first meeting in a Swiss hotel. Its supporters shared an optimistic belief that a new era of international relations was beginning. They were undeterred by the fact that the Americans weren't there, Congress had refused to join, and that the Russians and the Germans weren't members either. They believed the League could replace the bad old world of secret diplomacy with open discussion. Public opinion would always be listened to. Weak countries would have a voice as well as the strong. Poland's Prime Minister, the pianist Paderewski, called it the dawn of a new order. The League tried to build up popular support for its work. Jennifer Hart campaigned for the idea in Britain. My role in the League of Nations Union was to uh, try and get members of the public to understand the ideas behind the League, the, especially that it was a totally new thing, especially this concept of it was um, one was concerned if Nation A was attacking Nation B, you couldn't just stand on the sidelines, and to get public opinion to bring pressure on government to use the machinery of the League. So one didn't go around looking for faults in the government or weaknesses so much as saying, look, it's a wonderful new construction and it could be made to work if people really wanted to make it work. Many saw the first priority as disarmament. If the League could only get nations to agree to reduce their weapons, then the threat of war would be removed. Germany was almost completely disarmed in the early 1920s as a condition of that side. Though Britain, the United States and Japan agreed to limit their navies, the World Disarmament Conference, so many expected, was constantly postponed. But the League of Nations did begin to put another Wilsonian ideal into practice, self-determination. For the first time, some minorities were given a chance to choose which country they wanted to be in. Plebiscites were held in several regions that had been part of Germany. On the border of Denmark and Germany, people voted to be Danish. But for each winner, there were losers. Each result created a new wave of refugees. Though they'd won their plebiscite, German speakers on part of the new Polish-German border were driven from their homes and the Poles took the territory anyway. To Germanize, the Poles had seized what was rightfully German, 